and girls in this video let us very briefly discuss about the introduction to computer networks one of the topics of the third module in the informatics for computer applications course so we will be very quickly browse through some of the informations that you have to know about computer networks all of you know that computer network is a group of devices connected with each other through a transmission medium so you might have seen in our lab how the computers are connected through the wires and cables and that is what you call as a computer network and all these devices can be computers or printers scanners or some fax machines these devices can be connected together in a network and if you see what is the purpose of having this computer network you are all experiencing it we want to send and receive data stored in some other devices over the network and all these devices are sometimes referred as nodes in a computer network so this is a diagrammatic representation of computer network where all these are various devices you could see laptops desktops server machines mobile phones tabs all these are connected together in a network you call it as computer network and these are some of the examples of network in our everyday life so we use the computer network for social networking and mobile networks of, of course every one of us 24/7 we are all in mobile network and lots of network of computers we have in internet as well as in intranet and in airlines railways banking sector hospitals almost everywhere we use computer networks nowadays to share information from one part of the world to another part of the world or from one location to another location now if you take computer network there are five basic components of your computer network these are the five basic components sender receiver message protocol and transmission media so in any computer network there will be a sender sending some message and a receiver will be receiving the message for this particular communication you need a transmission media which will be wired or can be a wireless connection and apart from that you will have some set of rules and standards for sharing this message also so let us see what are these five components first one is the message message is nothing but a data or information whichever you want to transfer from one device to another device over a computer network sender is a device which will be sending the data to other device connected in the network whereas receiver is another device which is expecting the data from other device on the network so this is where the data will be received and from here the data will be sent and if you want to have this message to be communicated to transfer the data from one device to another device i need a transmission media which can be a wired one you will have set up cables for that or you may have wireless with the support of radio waves etc and another very very important component of a network communication system is the protocol protocol is nothing but it is a set of rules which is agreed by both sender and receiver because sender will be a completely a different device and the receiver will be completely a different device say for example your mobile phone is sending an email to your friend right so your mobile phone is completely a different device and your gmail server or whatever server you are going to use that is completely a different device 
So if you want these two different devices to communicate, I need a set of rules which will be agreed between the sender and receiver. So without your protocol, no two devices can be connected to each other and they cannot communicate also. So if you want to have a very reliable communication and if you want to have the data to be shared between two different devices, we are going to set some rules or standards so that the data which is sent and received by the receiver will be understood properly and the data will be delivered without any error for which the set of rules and standards are used which you call as protocol. So these are the two popular protocols available HTTP and HTTPS are the two protocols used by the web browsers. So you might have seen in your web browser always whenever you type something it will be automatically converted into HTTP colon double slash then the website address will be displayed there right. So that is what you call as the protocol HTTP is one of the protocols which is used for the communication uh, generally it is used by the web browser whenever you want to send some data or receive some data or if you want to send an email then the email services are using a standard or a protocol which you call as the SMTP protocol. So these are some of the protocols we will be discussing about the protocols in the final year but now you have to just understand protocol is nothing but a set of rules or standards which are used to establish a communication between two different devices or to share some data between two different devices. Now when you take computer networks what are the different ways of connecting the devices? So broadly we have two ways of connecting the devices. You can have point to point connection or you can have multi point connection. Let us see what is a point to point connection. So this is what you call as point to point connection which can be a wired or it can be a wireless connection also. So in the point to point connection this protocol is used as a communication link between two devices and it is very simple to establish also. And the most common example of point to point connection is a computer connected by a telephone line. Uh, we can connect two devices by means of pair of wires or using microwave or a satellite link also which is completely a wireless connection. Or if you take a remote control uh, operating on a television so that can also be called as a point to point connection. So from one device you have a direct connection to another device which can be a wired connection or it can be a wireless connection also. So if two devices are linked together for sharing the data then we call it as point to point connection. So this is what you call. So this workstation is connected with this one workstation using a wire and whereas these two workstations are connected using wireless service right. So this is what you call as point to point connection. Whereas in the multi point connection we also call it as multi drop configuration. Here two or more devices share a same link. Say for example uh, there are two kinds of multi point connections. If the links are used simultaneously between many devices then it is spatially shared line configuration. Whereas if a user takes turns while using the link then it is time shared line configuration. So what happens in the multi point connections there is going to be only one connection which can be shared by more than one devices for communication. So if the single link can be used simultaneously by more than one devices then I am going to call it as 
shared line configuration i call it as shared line configuration this one shared line configuration whereas if it cannot be shared simultaneously that means the link can be used only by one user at a time at a time only one user can share the data using the line then i call it as share time shared line configuration so at time t1 the line will be used by user 1 at time t2 the same line will be used by another user user 2 you call it as multi point connection so this is what you call as multi point connection i have only one link shared by all these users so it can be a shared line configuration or it can be time shared line configuration it depends so if this user wants to send the data then he is going to send the data using this line and if this user wants to send the data the same line will be used which you call as multi point connection now the next important thing that we have to understand in computer network is the computer architecture an architecture is nothing but the design in which all the computers are organized how do you organize n number of computers in a network you call it as an architecture or i can say architecture defines how the computers should get connected to get the maximum advantage of your computer network such as you want to have better response time or you want to have better security or a wonderful scalability so if i want to get all these things how effectively the computers can be connected together so that the data transmission is very fast you can share the data in a very faster manner and your network is completely secured so this is what you call as a computer architecture so architecture is nothing but how the computers are connected together to get maximum advantage of having better response time and better security and so on so the two very popular computer architectures are p2p architecture which you call as peer to peer architecture the other one is client server architecture this is what you call as peer to peer architecture so peer to peer architecture is all the computers in the computer network are connected with every computer in the network so each computer is connected with the other computers in the network now every computer in the network will be using same set of resources as that of the other computers so all the computers are equally having the number of resources so they are all of same priority and they are all having same resources also so there is no central computer which will be acting as a server rather all the computers can act as a server as well as the client at the same time then i call it as peer to peer architecture and the other one is called as client server architecture where you can observe here there is one server and you have n number of clients requesting for the service so in the client server architecture central computer will be acting as a hub and it is the one which serves all the requests from client computers and the communication takes place through the server computer for example if a client computer wants to share the data with the other client computer then it has to send the data to server first the request has to be sent first and then the server will be sending the data which you call as the response to the client and the server can provide different kinds of services and the client can request for these kind of services which are provided by the server so the client will be the client will be requesting for the service and the server will be responding with the service 
this is what you call as client server architecture then these are some of the uses of computer networks so we are not getting into the details of how the p to p architecture works how the client server architecture works we are just browsing through the different terminologies that we have in computer networks and we'll be discussing everything in detail in our final year course so these are some of the uses of computer networks you can communicate using email video instant messaging so all of you know right so we are all uh, in the computer network nowadays right so 24/7 your mobile phone is connected to the internet and you share some sort of um stuff like text video email whatever it is right so you will be sharing some message or you will be downloading some message from the internet you can share the devices such as printers scanners can also be shared you can share some files you can share some softwares and operating programs on the remote system and you can allow the network users to easily access and maintain the information and then let us see what are the various devices you require to build a computer network a computer network is built up from several devices and all these devices together will make it possible to transfer data from one device to another and especially for the smooth communication between the devices you need some devices computer network devices or i call it as computer network components so these are some of the components you require for transferring the data between devices any two devices for that matter if you want to share the data from one device to another device these are some set of components you require in that particular network first one is a server servers are some kind of computers again right so it can be a mainframe computer or it can be a mini computer or it can be some blade servers right so these are some kind of servers you can have and it will be running an operating system also and it will hold some data or this data so it it can hold some data which can be accessed by the client or which can be shared to other machines at the same time it can also hold some services which can be provided to other computers in the network which you call as the server so server is the one which provides some kind of service the service can be a data or it can be a processing or it can be anything for that matter is a server there is a client is a computer which is connected in the network and it can receive data by other which is sent by the sorry which is sent by other computer or it can get service from the server right so the client will be requesting for a service and the server will be replying or responding with its service now as we had already seen if you want to have this communication to happen you need a transmission media and all the computers in your computer network are connected with each other through a transmission media and these transmission media can be such a wire it can be some kind of optical fiber cable say for example in your home if you have a uh, wireless support you you may have a cable network and this cable is connected to your router or the modem and then you get the service so those kind of cables are optical fiber cables or if you have broadband connection you may be having a coaxial cable so these are different kinds of cables that you have as a transmission media in your computer network or you can also have a lan cable Uh, which is generally a wire which you had seen in our lab right all the computers are connected using this lan cable and 
even other devices such as printers, scanners, plotters can also be connected using the LAN cable. And another very very important network component is called as NIC card or you call it as network interface card and any computer must have a card called network interface card and the purpose of this card is to format the data so whatever data you are going to transfer that gets formatted in this particular card and you can send the data and receive the data at the receiving node and this card will have a unique ID which you call as media access control address MAC address you call it as MAC address and it will be written on the chip and it has a connector also to connect to the cable so this is what you call as a network card or NIC card and you can see in a laptop you will have a port like this network port which can be connected using a ethernet wire so these are the network cards available so this is a network card and this is the port right so this kind of card will be available and this is the port that you see here in the laptop or in the de desktop also you have a component like this inside the uh, cab cabinet and you can see the port here which you call as network port ethernet port and another important component is called as a hub and this is the one that connects all the computers in your network to each other so something like this you have a hub here and all these computers are connected together like this and whatever request comes from the client it will be received by the hub and this hub will be transmitting it to the server and it will be transmitted to the correct server actually it will be broadcasted this hub, hub will be broadcasting the request and the server the correct server will be receiving this request and it will be responding to the client that is what you call as a hub right so this is the one which broadcast the right so it receives one request and this request will be broadcasted and it will be received by the correct server and the service will be done whereas we have another device called as switches and this is also similar to hub but it is not going to broadcast the request instead it will be receiving the request and it will use a physical device address which you call as media access control address which is used in the incoming request and then it will be transferred to the correct com server computer right so so in the hub it will be broadcasted and the server has to identify the data and receive it whereas switch it will identify the server and it will be directing the data to the server that is the very basic difference between hub and switch and another device is called as a router and this router will be joining a multiple computer networks to each other so nearly 100 computers can be connected to each other uh, as a local area network and two different networks can be connected together <coughs> sorry you can see here i have a local area network and i have another local area network two different networks are connected together using a router that is the purpose of router and another device is called as a repeater repeater is also something like a router but the difference is it will be regenerating the signals so when you transfer the signal for a longer distance sometimes at, when it is uh, transferred at a longer distance the signals may become weak or it may get corrupted 
so the repeater will be receiving these signals bit by bit and it will be regenerating it at the original length that is the purpose of a repeater it's a two port switch it will receive and it will be sending it one port for receiving the data another port for sending the data so the only purpose of repeater is just regenerating the signals so when it is receiving the signal the signal may be a weak signal so what it does it is going to just regenerate those signals and another kind of device is called as a bridge bridge is also a repeater but it has one more functionality and it will filter the content by reading the mac address of source and destination and this is also actually used for interconnecting two different local area networks lan is nothing but local area network and which will be working with the same protocol and this is also having two ports one input and one output port so the repeater will be regenerating the signal and the bridge is also regenerating the signal but it will be reading the source and destination machines mac address also media access control address so this is what we had seen in the nic card you will have a unique id right we had seen in the nic card we have a unique id so for this card i will have a unique id that id is what you call as mac address media access control address and so for each device so if this computer wants to send some data to this computer this computer will have a mac address and this computer will also have a mac address so this mac address will be identified and then it will be transferring the data between these two that is the role of bridge and the last component is also called as a gate a sort not gate gateway and this is actually a passage between two different networks and you can see here i have a wide area network wan is a wide area network and i have a local area network on this side so i keep a gateway in between and i transfer the data between these two so the request and response will be passing through this gateway so this is the passage which is connecting these two different networks and you can observe here i have a local area network with one server and different workstations so this is one network and this network wants to communicate with the internet and it is passing the request through this gateway so whatever you want to access from this internet the request will be passing through this gateway and it reaches the internet in the same way the response will also come through this gateway so this is actually a messenger agent it will take data from one system interpret it and then transfer it to another system and all these gateways are generally more complex than switches and routers and these gateways so you you might have seen in our college also we have a gateway so the modem the internet modem is connected to the gateway and from the gateway you are receiving the data and whatever request is coming from the device that is passing through the gateway to the modem right so that is why the gateway is also called as a protocol converter why it is called as protocol converter because this local area network will be using a different protocol whereas the wide area network will be having a different protocol so the request coming from this protocol will be converted to the protocol that is available here and whatever response is coming from here it will be again converted to the required protocol so we can call it as a protocol converter also 
so let me stop here we'll discuss the different types of computer network in the next video thank you